All right, guys, my name is Dr. Sharna Wilbertson. Sihan, welcome to The Truth Matters. I'm super, super excited about this one. This has been kind of like a kind of brewing, ongoing thing. I've been like eyeballing this girl for a little while, kind of like stalking her a little bit, listening to her music, really enjoying her vibe, and I'm just appreciating who she is and her essence. And so I'm really, really excited to have Miss Chloe Caroline with us today. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you. I appreciate the stocking. <laughs> awesome. Well, I um I have a couple announcements before we get going. I just want to remind everybody to please help us out. Um algorithms mean everything. So all the likes, all the loves, all the shares, all the comments, everything helps us to get the message of truth and love and just revealing um, things and encouraging and inspiring other people. So if you are inspired in any way or you get a yes to share or comment, please do. You can also go to drshornell.com. I have some great books and resources there online classes. It has all of our previous shows, all our upcoming shows. You can get on the newsletter. And um, that is about it for announcements. Um, but without further ado, um, the reason why I actually found you in the first place, Chloe, is because of your song, Manifestation. Yes, Manifest. <laughs> yes, yes. And so um, for those of you who are watching that are not familiar with Chloe, or her music, or her work, or service in this realm of, of what we are doing here on life. I would love for you guys to get a little snapshot of who she is, what she's doing, her work. And um, so I'm just going to ask you, Chloe, and jump right in. Like, Tell us a little bit about you. Let, let everybody know a little bit of who you are and just get a sneak peek of that. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, so I was born and raised in Southern California and grew up in a very musical household. Um, my dad was in bands um, his whole life and um, very much like in that world. And so he was always introducing me to all sorts of music, um, everything from, you know, Frank Sinatra to Fleetwood Mac. And then, you know, I grew up in the same time as, uh, you know, like Avril Lavigne and Michelle Branch, Gavin DeGraw and all this, yeah, those, those, those icons, um, and Dolly Parton, can't forget about her. <laughs> so I really grew up in this place that was very much like a melting pot in itself. Lots of different cultures here, obviously, um, even different scenery, um, nevertheless, different music. And so I kind of became, I feel like this melting pot and even just like as a kid, never really like having one group of friends. I was always like a floater. I had friends in a billion different groups, kind of found myself in a bunch of different people, which I think has influenced my music because I feel like I can relate to a lot of different kinds of, of humans. And um, that was kind of my, that's always been my goal is to make sure that no one feels alone. Um, I got really sick as a kid and um, I, I've been singing and writing since I was six, but when I was 11, I was dealing with a life threatening illness, got pulled out of school, um, almost, almost died. And for me, yeah, for me, music became my vehicle to heal. It was just something that I felt very called to do. And I, I taught myself guitar on YouTube and I had been playing piano for a number of years, um, but wanted to learn guitar and I channeled it through, you know, poetry and I, creative writing was always my strength too. Like I, I wrote like little novels as a, as a kid and I just loved storytelling and, um, and for me, so it became very therapeutic and um, I had a teacher in seventh grade too, that kind of this whole thing was like, free write, you know, just whatever comes to mind, write it out. And so that's where I really began channeling what I was going through. And in turn, you know, of course, turn even more so to poetry and um, in music and started posting on Facebook. And finally, for the first time, people kind of realized that I did, you know, what I did, you know, I wasn't the kid who was like singing at state fairs. Like I did like the occasional, you know, I would do the talent show every year and I would do like a piano recital, but like, I was very bubbly with friends, but not necessarily like, I want to be the center of attention when it came to 
to singing, um, I wasn't that confident in it yet. Um, and so Facebook gave me kind of that opportunity to be honest, because it was like, oh, I can just put it on online, even though it's like, it actually is a really bold thing to do. And now looking back, like I look at some of these videos and I'm like, damn girl, <laughs> you were fearless. <laughs> Um, but anyways, I started going to school. I got such positive responses from people being like, I relate to your music. And for the first time it was like, oh, you know, this isn't for just for me. Like this is for other people. Like, wow, like people actually connect to this stuff. Like, and that was just the coolest feeling in the world. And I was like, I just, I got it. I got to do it. And, uh, kind of kept writing, kept putting putting music out there and um, eventually went to Nashville when I graduated high school. And uh, that was the first time I was surrounded by kids that did what I did, <laughs> which was really cool. Um, and it kind of catapulted from there. I could keep going. I have a very long story, but <laughs> yeah. No, I love every minute of this. Don't, yeah, keep going. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, Nashville, I mean, gosh. Um songwriters all over the like was that like uh did it ignite you even more to to, yeah. to, to go for it or did you kind of feel mm -hmm. like oh my god there's so many of us nobody needs you know because i've heard yeah. both when you yeah no that, that's a really good point um at first so i went to so i went to belmont university oh, i was did really you really oh my yeah. god what a great school I'm yeah so it's an awesome there. school it's an awesome school and um I was, I really wanted to go to college at that time, even though I was, you know, and obviously be in a place where I could also develop my career. Um, I studied music business and wanted to really know the ins and outs of that. Um, even though I had grown up around that to a degree, like I really, I really wanted to, to, to get involved even further. <laughs> um, and so it was interesting. Like I definitely Nashville at first shell shocked me coming from the beach and growing up in, in this little beach bubble that even though I lived in LA, like it really was a bubble, um, a very safe little beach bubble. Um, and Nashville is very different than that. And going to private school and I had gone to public school for most of my life and my one experience at private school is awful. So, you know, finally being back in a, in a private college and, small really small classes and just like kind of having a similar high school vibe was definitely interesting at first and yeah um i feel like it yeah it was definitely interesting but when i started interning <clears throat> at publishing companies and i worked at um sun records that was my first job and so like elvis presley and stuff like that and and being yeah around like these these this iconic music and um these people and these teams that were making it happen was was really really cool and and yeah slowly but surely writing with other people because i had been writing by myself for my whole life basically um was a really cool experience too because it was people that took chances on me that were much older than me and maybe even did you know a completely different genre than i did and then people my age and and i mean i was writing with people I mean, literally that had like number one hits and then people that had never released a song in their life. So it was like, it was like constantly getting, you know, this kind of, um, this lesson in how to be a better songwriter by just like throwing myself into it and playing shows. Um, even though at first it was very much just like, all right, here's a little guitar, you know, me and my guitar gig, you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, and then started recording a lot in the studio, which was so fun and something that it's like one of my favorite parts of what I do. Um, but yeah, and building my fan base online as well. That was kind of my goal when I moved there. Um, it was like, all right, yes, I'm surrounded by the music industry, but my goal is to reach people like as many people as I can globally. And social media is a way to help me do that. Um, at first right and uh yeah kind of began my journey there which kicked off a lot for me it takes a lot of courage to do what you're doing whether you really realize it or not there's so many people i have experienced that are in this like job kind of nine to five you mm -hmm. know working at a bank or whatever you know and just like 
don't have the means to shift gears. Maybe they have a family or, right. you know, made some other choices that kind of like hindered those paths. Yeah. Um, and, or, um, or just were fearful to even do it yeah. in the first place. And mm -hmm. like, what would you say to people, you know, like, how did you, did, how did you have that in you? Yeah. Like, like what, what, mm -hmm what like in, ignited you or like charged yeah. you to just like jump off the cliff and go for it? Mm -hmm. Um, so like I said, I was pretty shy at first, um, <clears throat> when I was, you know, 12 years old, you know, and that's, that's not super unusual, but, um, but I did know it was what I wanted to do. I mean, even in third grade, like our teacher asked us like, what do you want to be? And like, I drew a picture of a singer and like, I always, it was just like kind of innate knowing, but I also, you know, remember writing it down about how like, you know, scared I was of failure. Basically I was like, you know, what if people laugh? What if I mess up, you know? And, but I did do remember in that same sort of diary entry being like, well, you know, one day I hope to, to break through that. And I think just like, it was something that I knew I was going to do. It just, I had to like continue to, to break the comfort zone. And, um, and so, yeah, it was, it was forcing myself in a way to, to put myself in situations that scared me. So, you know, whether it started with Facebook and then doing the talent show with my friend and us singing together and then me finally doing a show by myself and um, playing my first show with just me and a guitar or, you know, like constantly trying to like do something that was a little bit scarier each time. And I think that helped. But also, you know, when I realized that people connected to my music, that was like kind of, there was just the some, something in me that like went off. It was like, all right, you, if you don't do this, no one is going to feel that way. <laughs> you know, not that other people don't make music and that they could relate to it to other people's great. But like the fact is they're relating to mine and that is so cool. And I'm yeah. going to regret it for the rest of my life. And I even knew that at like 18 years old, if I don't try it and also, cause there was a point too, where I was like, I was fascinated by medical stuff because I had been sick and, um, and so I thought, well, maybe I'll become a doctor or a psychologist or, um, or even just like a writer, like write books or something. Um, cause I, I love creative writing in general, but, but yeah, I just kind of was like, I'm doing this. It's the first thing I want to do when I get home after cheer practice or whatever, wherever I am, it's, it's the first thing I do. I would do it for free. And so that's gotta mean something, you know? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, I kind of was like, I just gotta, I gotta keep going. And, um, obviously the more you put out there and the more positive reinforcement that you get from people, um, and affirmation, it doesn't hurt either, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> that was, that was my thing. It's just, you gotta keep taking, taking those risks, but it's hard. It's not easy. And I still have to remind myself of that every, every day. <laughs> Well, yeah. And speaking of like the affirmations and mm -hmm. the positive, like, especially with online, oh my gosh, there's mm -hmm. like the other part of that, which is wow. like the rejection and the mm -hmm. trolls and like just the mean spirited people that are like, dude, do you have like a life or anything? Like you just mm -hmm. go around on people's pages and just be mean. <laughs> and, you know, I don't know if you've ever experienced that yeah. kind of stuff, but, um, mm -hmm. I was just talking about this on a show yesterday where someone was interviewing me mm -hmm. and um, it's like, it, I, I, for me, I can't like, my mind doesn't work like that to just like, Oh, I'm bored. I'm going to go look on people's yeah. thing and go on their yeah. platform, which to me is like a home, like your space. Right. I'm going to go to their space and like, Talk shit about them, or like, oh um, how ugly they are, or you know, mm -hmm. tell them they're stupid or they're wrong. It's like that doesn't like jive with me, and it's so funny because, again, I see this like I know some people will go like, oh, but you're public and mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. put yourself out there, so this is a free, free right. for all. Like you know, you, you know, you should be able to take the good with the bad, and I get all that too, but. In reality, like no one would really come to your house, knock on the door and tell you some of the stuff that people write sometimes. Oh, yeah. It's like, so I started calling people like yeah. if they would 
like post something, you know, yeah. there's that little button in the corner with the phone. Yeah. And I would actually call them yeah. not to confront them or be <laughs> a bitch or anything, but I would just be like, Hey, you know, I saw your comment and I'd love to talk to you about it. Yeah. And they would not answer the phone. And then yeah. I would even like try again. And I'd even post like a little yeah. DM and just go, Hey, you know, um, I tried to call you a couple of times. I saw your comment. I'd love to chat with you. And yeah. Um, you know, no one ever has called me back, but like three people out of a hundred, like, and, wow. and, and the people who called back, we were able to have like a really beautiful conversation wow. and, and kind of like in some ways agree mm -hmm. in some ways disagree, or maybe it was a lesson for everybody and I wow. could kind of see both sides or whatever. But for the most part, those people are freaking chicken shit to actually have a conversation face to face, like even yeah. over the phone. Yeah. And so like, how do you deal with like mm -hmm. ignorant I, mean, I, see, I don't call them dummies you know what I mean? i'm just like but i'm ignorant in the sense of the real sense of they just don't know what they don't know mm -hmm. or they don't understand or you know yeah. you know so how do you handle that because i'm mm -hmm. sure you get some of that i mean i know you're getting a lot of you know yay yeah. good job too yeah no and and i've been I've been very fortunate that the, that the trolls are few and far between, but I have definitely had my share of that. And, um, and just really weird people, but, <laughs> um, a lot of times, you know, I, I mean, it's not, it's not easy, but of course, like I try to remind myself like anybody who's willing to like, just do that. So willy nilly and just throw that up there. Like it's clearly, you know, it's not coming from a place of love and therefore they're not feeling loved or they're feeling insecure or, you know, you don't hurt people like that unless it's um, something to do with yourself. Um, you just, you don't. Anybody who's like actually confident or whatever is everything is, you know, things are going well in their life does not feel the need to like drag down another person. You know, even, even like literally like if you, if you are jealous of somebody, there's a reason you're feeling that jealousy because you are feeling, feeling like for whatever reason, you're not up to par or whatever it is. You feel threatened. And why do you feel threatened? And you could literally dig so deep into that. Um, and so I try to remind myself of that. And I try to respond with like, the only thing I have control over is my response or lack thereof. And so, um, you know, i I've had situations where I try to just respond with kindness and be like, you know, like maybe call them out to a degree and be like that hurt or whatever, or me, but maybe even not because that still gives them some sort of satisfaction, but kind of just be like, all right, well, like, you know, thanks for being here, sending you love. And sometimes I've been really surprised because people are like, oh, wow. Well, I just, I didn't think you'd respond. So that's why I said that, you know, um, I love you. I'm actually your biggest fan. Like, crazy shit you know and yes. you're just like what like you just wanted attention and there you go though there you go you wanted wow, attention. attention i didn't and think about that like attention. The desperate need for somebody's um connection and i think yeah. ultimately that's what is is always missing it's connection <sighs> yeah it's, connection. Mind, it's like whoa that is huge for me thank you yeah, you're welcome but yeah like the connection attention. i did not see that that yes. is like really a and great... someone to hear them right even if it's like they, they'll say anything it's just somebody to to be like oh me um pay attention to me um i have a voice and and there could be so it could be super deep rooted or it could be not deep rooted at all but for the most part it's the, always comes back down to yeah seeking some sort of validation or love or connection um and so yeah trying to respond to those people that way sometimes that works sometimes that does not work and they're just still really mean and then at that point you have to make a decision and and i've made decisions where i've had to to block or delete comments because it's just not serving me and it's not serving the people around me and not to say that like people can't have in an opinion that doesn't agree with mine i mean that's what makes the world go around and that's what makes art go around and so there are people that aren't necessarily gonna dig my music or whatever um or even dig me but um you can also like not like a, a song or something or what somebody's saying and still respect them yeah. um i mean 
Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so I, you can, and you can get it, you know, I get it. Oh, I don't necessarily like it. It's not really like my vibe or I can't relate to it, but I understand it. I get why other people like it and I'm not going to like knock that down. And so, you know, if someone writes something that they actually have a, a, a point in, a, in a, an opinion, that's not necessarily hurtful, but just might be a different perspective. Like I'm always open to that. That's, you know what I mean? I don't want to delete that from the world because that could start a conversation um True. but yeah the the hate um <laughs> it just it, yeah it, ma it makes me sad and honestly i've tried to spin it every time i see something like that into like you know what they just they're looking for love like you know what i mean like they're like it, it makes me sad it makes me sad honestly not necessarily I mean, to a degree yes of course your ego is always like a little bit shot down <laughs> um or whatever but but it mostly, it makes me sad for them. And so being able to even like, when I see it and at first it hits the ego, being like, oh, all right, Chloe, no, turn this around, be sad for them that they felt the need to do that um, and and move on, send them love and move on. Don't let them have the power um, because they it, it, you, they always will, you know, <laughs> if, if you let them. It's a, it's a total decision that, um you have to make um and that goes with real life bullies too not just online and people that are are not serving you and being able to like learn how to walk away from those relationships or friendships um and um and yeah do it do it for you and it's not easy i struggled with boundaries for a long time i still do to a degree but i've gotten a lot better at it because you know, it's, uh, if it's not elevating my life in some way, or it can be like a, a growing lesson relationship, it's like, why? There's just too many awesome people there's in the world. <laughs> it's just, why? <laughs> you know what I mean? Why would you keep that, keep that there? So, so yeah, if, if that helps at all, that would be my, <laughs> my advice. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just one of my uh, opportunities I'll say mm -hmm. is, um, like I could have like a hundred people who are mm -hmm. all like, yay, or good yeah. job, or that's so nice. Um, and then like two people say something stupid or just like whatever. And it's like, my focus is there instead of like yeah. the broad, you know, and I don't know if that's just human or my own issue or, you know, I whatever. Think I think it's absolutely human. I don't think and there's a reason that celebrities, even like, you know, people like Taylor Swift and so like you get to a point where if you start reading your comments, you're going to go down a really dark and deep hole. Um, <laughs> it's just not good for you anymore um, because obviously the more people that you're reaching, the more people that are hurt <laughs> and whatever, you know, yeah. that want attention because you have more attention are out there. And, um, and so, yeah, no, I do think it's like a completely normal thing to, to for our brains to seek that out because we want we want people to like us you know we want people to understand us that's like my biggest thing is like and I've always I guess struggled with it is like wanting to feel understood or like my my intentions to be understood or my yeah my original intention with my music this is what I meant by this song and I want you to really like get that and it's like okay but Chloe, like, so you can't control how people receive that. <laughs> I can do my best to like, kind of, you know, to, to put it out there and try to explain, but also like realizing that like the people that are uh, meant to align with you, just like, you know, we've aligned, um, are going to naturally be attracted to you. It's not a forced connection. And those are the people you want anyways, <laughs> you know, but it's, that's also hard because it's like, like you said, you had an amazing conversation with those three people and you guys realize that at the end of the day, like there was an understanding and I think there always is, but, um, it's just kind of deciding whether to put the effort in. And I always like my instinct, like yours is to like, want to convince the person to yeah. like, to like me or to understand me or to realize that we're not that different at all because that it tends to be the truth. Um, but yeah, it's just how much energy is it taking taking away from you, and um, is it is it worth it? I don't know. Yes, I, it that just is great. It depends. 
<laughs> yeah, because it can be like an energy leak, you know, um, yeah. just like other things, you know, distractions and stuff. And it's like, okay, is this taking away from my mm -hmm. focus, my mission, my purpose, you know, yeah. all of that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I know, like I mentioned the manifestation thing. Yeah. Um, like how much is in, in Belmont? Is that, is that a Christian school or something yeah. like, mm -hmm. so what is your spirituality? Like what, mm -hmm. how does that play into not mm -hmm. only your own life, but also in yeah. your work? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So I, um, I was, I was like raised Christian and, and still am, but, um, I've always been, I feel like at heart even more so like, a spiritual person for me they go hand in hand like 100% um but when I was let's see like it was 2018 2019 kind of had like reached a very low point in my relationship and a uh, very like serious like five-year relationship and uh dealing with a lot of like his mental health and um just yeah it was bad very up and down and um kind of feel like i had like this like stirring in my soul to kind of like to to to, to break free i suppose of that um and you know i had moved to la and he had to and um i had at this point i had been living with him and then had decided to to, to live with my parents um just to really see if he even liked it in la um and then kind of go from there and we were starting to to build back up again and it seemed like things were going well but at the same time like i had this like kind of question mark in my head of like all right you know could there be better and i had had the same thing for like why i even went to la there was something in my mind that was kind of like i love nashville i love the community i've created here but um i feel like i am ready for something bigger um and and it's scary because, you know, nothing bad's going on here. Like things are still happening. Um, but I had an opportunity to be in a movie and um, do the soundtrack for it. And that was really incredible. Oh, I didn't know that. oh my yeah. God. What? Yeah. What, what did um, you do? It was, um, it was a Hallmark movie called Love, of Course. Oh, how cool is that? I did not know that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was so fun. And that, that was such a great experience. Again, like breaking out of the comfort zone. I had never acted in my life. And I was really blessed with the opportunity to to get that role and to work with really incredible people and I was it kind of just like woke me up though to the idea of like okay there is there definitely is more and there are more opportunities and um I've got it you know I've I've been wanting to go to California again as an adult because I hadn't you know you know stepped into my career there. I mean I've been going back and forth I suppose but I hadn't been there full time and um and I was just kind of I felt I felt called to um and so kind of took that leap of faith and then after that took another leap of faith which was ending that relationship and um you know you it, you kind of that's kind of how it works you know I was so scared to leave Nashville um because I just you know I thought well what else is going to fall away and it turns out, you know, yeah, more things do fall away, but it's trusting that process and that it's for the best and also nothing's permanent. I was like, I could still go back to Nashville. You know what I mean? Realizing that like, there's no bad decision here. It's just, it's just a decision um, and trying something new. And so that kind of kickstarted this sort of spiritual awakening for me and gave me also the time right around, because it was at, 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 at COVID um, where I realized that I needed to like really be alone <laughs> and for the first time in my you know young life as a young adult life and um and figure out like what it was that I wanted and like who I was and so I began um, that journey and started writing affirmations down and started journaling and writing gratitude lists and just um and manifesting things because I also too had become really fascinated with people's personalities and personality types, which got me into astrology and seeing the connections there. And, oh my gosh, why am I attracting, as I was figuring myself out, like, why am I attracting these people? Um, and who do I want to attract and blah, blah, blah. Right. I'm just going to jump in there. That 
that is so much ownership and i love that you you know because so many people just blame everyone and go like oh my life this keeps right. happening and why is it you know why and for you to be like i am attracting this you yeah. know that is like so big and when mm -hmm. when that happened for me too i was like ah well the good news i mean the bad news is i created all this right. but the good news is i can reverse it you know right. i have the power i have the creative power to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But i don't want to interrupt so to keep in it like i love this so much yeah you know? yeah yeah no and i mean that that's the thing it's like i had to realize like well why do i you know why do i feel like and for me i've always been the person that's like well i see this person's potential and you know very yeah. much an optimist and that's yeah. not a bad way to be but it is when you become like a martyr in a relationship to where it's like well i you know, I know that I deserve better here, or even like I want better, or I want different, or I want more. Not that this person's bad, but like, could there be more here? You know, um, and then kind of realizing that, like, okay, hey, well, then I have to like go and see if there's actually more. I gotta believe that there that there is, and and if this person is meant to be in my life, then they will still be there if if they are it, right? Um, and but first and foremost, like I have to look at at myself and um, why I feel the need to to change this situation, I guess, um, and start pouring that love like back into myself because I was just so exhausted at that point in that relationship. Um, I just felt dead <laughs> inside, and quite frankly, was like I got to a point where I just felt like sick at night because I I love this person, but I realized that like I couldn't. I couldn't make the relationship be what I wanted it to be and, and too much had happened and I, you know, could pour as much love. It could keep pouring that love, but at the same time, like I couldn't necessarily change how he either viewed himself or he, how just any of that. And if I was trying to change it, like, okay, then I'm not loving the relationship for what it is and that's not good either. Right. Um, and so anyways, yes, became obsessed with, with the personality thing and, and figure out what I wanted to attract. And then, slowly but surely kind of started pinpointing the things that brought me joy every day and started doing them again, started writing by myself again for the first time in a long time um, and taking the time to do that, going on daily walks and taking the time to do that um, because it brought me happiness, um, cooking and, and, and learning how to just like be in tune with the present moment because so much of one my personality but to my career it's you're constantly forward forward moving forward looking forward um looking at you know like managing a million things at once um you feel like time is running out like it's just it's what it is um and and so yeah i really had to teach myself like how to just like be at, at, at be still really and be okay with being still and actually like enjoy it again and and that kind of helped me just open up, I think, and, and really be able to manifest the things that I wanted because I was pouring that love into myself. So it just it naturally like attracts. And um, I started, I kind of was like, reached a point where I was like, well, screw it. Like, what do I have to lose if I say this out loud or if I write it down? Like literally, okay, if, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But like, what if it does? And I think like the what if it does <laughs> became like my whole thing. Like, what if there is better? Okay, well, let's, that's fun. That's a fun idea. Let's like lean into that. Like, let's pretend that it's already happened, basically. Yes. Um, and then when I just started seeing like just crazy things unfold, whether it was like manifesting my song on the radio or something very simple that was just like mind blowing to me at the time like it, it it i mean it freaked me out but it also was like wow like this stuff is real like no doubt it's real um and so obviously was as i was like on that journey was writing songs and that kind of was building up my the ep that i just released and then um the one that i'm about to release and um and it's funny too because as i was doing that i um was I knew that I wanted to, of course, like be in a relationship again at, at some point, um, but I didn't want to go out there like looking for it like intentionally. And so I kind of just 
put it out there that eventually, like I wasn't going to intentionally go on dates. If it like somebody popped up and they seemed like a great fit and they asked me on a date, maybe I'd be open to it. We'll see. Like, you know what I mean? And, um, was kind of manifesting this person. And, uh, the first time that I ever played the songs live, like my first show after COVID was a night that like my now boyfriend was like in the audience and um and yeah and like it just it was crazy and even that kind of just showed me okay well you know we're always exactly where we're supposed to be had i not gone through x y and z had i not gone through this experience um getting to know myself and figuring out what i wanted and writing this material like i wouldn't have that material to sing on that stage and he wouldn't be there you know what i mean like it was just like oh this all kind of ties together um and it was 100% worth it. But if you would have asked me like a couple years ago, okay, like you're going to be with, a, you know, do you think you're going to be with somebody completely different and blah, blah, blah. Like it'd be like, uh, you know, I don't know. No. So yeah, that, that answers your question in a very long winded way. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love like the way you think and the way you express. It's like couple of things that you said like really stuck out to me and the word pretend you mentioned like why not pretend I love that word because to pretend is to, to the word tend is to tend to something yeah. and pre is to pretend like act as if it happened like right. pretend yeah. and like what why not and right. just the imagination in general mm -hmm. um, to imagination to image your life and to right. embody that and I went through a similar thing. Um, we have a lot in common, the whole like be still. Um, mm -hmm. I had went through that whole like chase of like the next thing in my life or my career, whether it was relational or career wise. And I went through this thing where I quit like everything. And yeah. I was just, I mean, I was in school and I quit, I quit my job. Like I would quit listening to like, other podcasts and like it was like I just shut it all out to like really get in tune with like what God was saying inside you know right. and recognizing that voice and being able to like recognize it from all the other chatter and maybe mm -hmm. the outside sources or different things and to really be able to trust yeah. that like intuition and I mean yeah. you're so prophetic like oh my god yeah. like I could just yeah. Yeah, that's one of your major mm -hmm. and um and, but trusting that and learning to trust that and having the confidence to trust that and pretending and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really embodying the now and yeah. like stress stress by really is living in the future or the past and not, right. not right. in that but it is for me anyway I and maybe everybody um a little bit of an opportunity again yeah. to um to, to just like stay and I remember like I'm not a big scripture person I mean I went to Bible school and seminary like you and right. then had my whole like revolution of what God means to me in a different mm -hmm. way kind of deal and I do remember the scripture that says be still and, and know that I'm God and then it was like be still and know and then it was like be yeah. still and then it was like be and i'm like yeah. be yeah how do you freaking be like yeah because i'm such yeah. a doer and like thinker. <laughs> me too me too you know, like i'm a like performance you yeah. know like, all of these like stupid programs of like literally unconditional love yeah like needing to perform to get rewarded and to be yeah. loved and right, of, right. like be in love because I am, you know, I am. Yes, exactly. I mean, and that, that's literally it. And whether you're looking for a love or you're looking for the right job or whatever it is, like, it's like, you have to be the one, like, because if you, you know what I mean? If you're not, if I'm not pouring into myself, what I expect somebody else to pour into me, like, how does that, you know, it just doesn't make sense. Like why, you know, why would they, if I'm not? And, yeah. um, and yeah, and, and yeah, it, it, if you're not taking the chances on yourself, like no one, no one is in a way that's gonna, I feel like not create some sort of codependent situationship where it's like, you feel like you desperately need them now. Because the thing is like, when you get to a place like where you're actually feel that, that wholeness and security within yourself and not to say that like you're fully healed, no one I don't think ever is. Um, but like, you're a lot 
you're a lot easier to trust like letting things go and and flow away from you and to uh, you and it's just kind of like all right like <laughs> i don't and you appreciate things more too i feel like you know like i really appreciate you know when i meet it when i meet a great friend or i have a conversation like this or um or my relationship now and and even the tiniest little things you just have this like immense amount of appreciation for that those little moments of like love <laughs> and yeah. light in the present moment uh, because you can see them you know we get so distracted when we're constantly like in the past where we're moving forward and only looking forward <laughs> i guess yeah. Yeah, well, and I think, too, like some of the world programs or whether it's like a religious program or just a human program, I think that um, especially, and I don't know if I made this up, but um, women in general or people mm -hmm. in service of some kind, whether it's like a spiritual service or um, or just whatever, it's like um, to love everyone else to the point of, you being nothing like that martyr right. thing of just like yeah. gotta take care of everyone gotta do everything you know oh yeah and i had realized like i was serving to the point mm -hmm. of like being sick like yeah literally and mm -hmm. and a lot of people in healthcare and yeah. different positions will just give 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 and like they have nothing and yeah. um and i got really sick too mm -hmm. and, and had that situation where i was like i came to kind of a crossroads it's like I got to either like pour into me and love me despite my performance. Right. And my, cause I wasn't even able to perform like work right. or whatever um, to be on the planet. Like, you know, yeah. like I, and to me, it was such a big like aha of unconditional love, how I had even like put that on myself, like that I wouldn't even love me unless I was doing this and this and right. doing that. And doing all these things and like mm -hmm. so that I didn't realize I had put so many conditions even on myself mm -hmm. and or bought into that program right and you know um seek ye first the kingdom yeah. of God and then all these things will be added mm -hmm. is the real thing is right. and where's the kingdom it's like right here and so yeah. if you could like train or educate people to like follow those unctions within yeah. Mm -hmm. to to you know take the steps so like i i, I picture like a kleenex box and it's mm -hmm. like well, how do we get to the end like how do we get to the thing it's like just right. take one out at a time and then the next yeah. one pop up and it's but those steps and that courage to just like stay yeah and be yeah and just follow those little tiny like breadcrumbs mm -hmm. and like mm -hmm. not worry about the how not worry about like well, right what if, this, what if that and like because mentally gymnastics wise, like that's so much yeah. energy instead of just being like resting and God, I trust God and God's got this in me mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I got this and I'm here for a reason and I'm yeah. born for this and mm -hmm. you're born for this girl. Like you are so in your space, like you are just a bright light. And you just ignite people like everywhere you go and everyone you touch and everyone you speak to. And, you know, just it's so lovely to watch someone like you, like literally embody truth and love and, and just, you know, share your heart and your experience and to express only the way that you can. Because no yeah. one can do it like you. Like if you were missing and you weren't doing this. Yeah. What? people wouldn't get the keys that you have, you know, and that's well, thank so you. beautiful to, thank to watch you. what you're doing and to just like be a little person on the side that gets to see and feel yeah. like what you're doing and how you're expressing and the healing that you provide mm -hmm. and just the, the so love cool. and just, I love your twin flame thing. Cause when I did the same thing and I like really pulled back and focused and yeah. really started loving myself and self care and like not feeling guilty about it. Finally. Right. Right. It's like, God, I feel so guilty. Like getting yeah. up kids or just like spending time reading or whatever. It's like, what is yeah. wrong with me? Like, yeah. Um, exactly. that's when my love came too. And yeah. he was a, a boyfriend that I was with five years in my yeah. high school, college years. Yeah. And he was finally back and, mm -hmm. But he couldn't hear me. Like the vibe wasn't there for him to even find me. 
right because there was so much hate and chaos and right self, self you know hate and you know but mm -hmm. when i could clear that and right. radiate like prove mm -hmm. love to myself by yep. these actions right that's what sent the vibration to like send a signal for him to be yeah. like okay it's it's okay it's to come back now. and yep. you yep. know that was a big huge thing and that still is a big thing and i think some people are so busy like on the apps looking for their guy mm -hmm. looking for their girl like you know yeah. da, 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 that drive and it's mm -hmm. like but i love how you were just like you know what he'll come and yeah. it'll be and then you just like almost gave it up and you're mm -hmm. like i'm just gonna do this song and yeah here's you know <laughs> literally no it's like that's exactly what i said like before the show like i was just like you know what all right, well, God is perfect timing. I got to trust that this is all happening for a reason. Like, I was super discouraged, and but trying to find gratitude and trying to figure out what everything meant. And then, yeah, I, I didn't even want to get on stage that night and kind of was like, well, I'm going to do it anyways. Like, screw it. I, like, worked this hard, and, and I did, and and he was there. And, and so, you know, it's just that that's proof in itself. And I remember even before that kind of reminding myself, like, well, if I exist, then like they exist, you know, like it must be possible. And so kind of another kind of reminder to embody what it is that I wanted. Um, and like, it was already there because therefore like I'm proof that it can happen. And I was like, I've got to be my own reminder <laughs> that it can happen. Right. Oh, I just almost fell out of my chair. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it's, um, it's pretty wild and it's something that you like I, I mean I have to continually like remind myself of in this industry um to stay to stay grounded and level-headed and to keep going and it's conversations like this that help reinforce that continually too because you know it's like oh well, you know, this song doesn't have millions of streams on Spotify still you know like and you're just like why and you see other people and so it's so it's so easy to, to get discouraged um, and forget um, that it is working. <laughs> um, it's, but it's, it's, it's working how it's supposed to. And, um, and if I believe that it's meant to be, then I've got to, you know, let go of the blocks that are, that are there because it's not necessary. Cause I'm convincing myself that it's not here yet, <laughs> you know? Oh, sorry. And, and all the things like before all of that mm -hmm. too, in my case anyway, yeah, it seemed like it wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. And yet I picked up so much on the way yes. that I'm using now, like yeah. everything, even though it doesn't look like mm -hmm. it, it's like, it's still important. Sure. And, yeah. And, and just, you know, and okay, right. with, mm -hmm. The, with the like not being so driven for the destination but enjoying mm -hmm. all the the steps like when you right. went to nashville or whatever mm -hmm. you know it's like okay i learned a lot and that's cool and i'm going to take this to the next place and yeah. you know you know and just building on mm -hmm. all of that and even the energy of nashville or the energy of the different places that you went that are now in your field like forever yeah. that that mm -hmm. accumulate into this beautiful soup of like energy radiation sure. affect people and touch people and mm -hmm. that's that's pretty cool um but if you have any like two more things and i know mm -hmm. you got to go um any like words of encouragement for where people are right now to step into their mm -hmm. dreams, embody their dreams to live their soul mission, mm -hmm. their purpose. Yeah. And then tell us where we can find you and so where people can connect with mm -hmm. what you're doing and your work. And yeah. I want a lot of people to flood all your stuff. And yeah, um, thank you. Thank you so much. No, I love you too. Um, yeah, I would say first, first and foremost, like to anybody who is, yeah, either maybe feeling stuck or scared to go after their dreams um, or their goals or take that first step. Um, and it's, of course, it's always easier said than done, but trying to let go of, of these expectations, um, you know, something might not, obviously, like, let's say even it could be a simple example, or you want to start <laughs> selling your paintings, like, you know, yeah, at first, 
you might not be making millions, you know, or whatever. You want to write a book. It's, you might not have millions of copies sold at first, um, but you're still like enjoy the process of, you know, writing the book. Like all it starts with with you. And that's that's the first step is literally just like doing it, because if it's not there, then no one can have it, you know, then it can't reach those people if it just doesn't exist at all. Um, and so kind of like, yeah, letting go of what you think it's supposed to look like. Um, and just, again, allowing it to be like what it is. <laughs> Always we get so caught up of like, well, it's going to be such a failure if not everybody buys this or, you know, whatever, it doesn't go viral. And it's like, all right, well, I hear you. That would be really cool if it goes viral, but that should be the bonus you know, and trusting that, okay, well, if it's meant to go viral, like it, it will um, in its own time. And not to say you don't put in work <laughs> to make that happen, um, potentially, or whatever, not make it happen, but put it out there at least. Um, but you just, you got to start somewhere. And otherwise, it's just, it's not going to happen. And it's, it's so cool to hear people that have had really amazing stories where they just were like, you know what, screw it, like, I'm going to, take the risk and they were just like a mom or something and they wanted to you know start a jewelry business or whatever it is and they just started with like a piece of jewelry or getting a, the supplies and putting it up on etsy it's like you just you really just don't know what what could happen if you don't go for it so um that's i guess my my biggest piece of advice i think we're all creatives in our own right even if we don't make art um, but you gotta just, you just gotta do it. <laughs> you just gotta do it. You're the only one, literally the only person stopping yourself and you don't need to invest hundreds and of thousands of dollars in something at first. It just start small and again, let go of those expectations. Um, and I think, um, it'll, it's crazy to see kind of where it can lead. So that's the first piece of advice. And you can find me on uh, ChloeCaroline.com. I'm on Instagram at ChloeCaroline, TikTok at I'm Chloe Caroline, uh, Twitter at I'm Chloe Caroline. I'm everywhere, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music. You just search my name. Um, I have my phone number in my bios too, and it's actually me. Um, but yeah, if you want like real time updates um, or just talk to me one on one, I'm also there um, and I have my own podcast as well called um unwritten and so oh, I didn't know that either cool yes. what is it about? yeah so I co-host it um with my friend Shauna Petruno she's um actually in Canada and she's an amazing person and she's a, a model and basically skincare expert as well but we just hit it off on our spirituality and and kind of aligning there. And so, yeah, we decided to, to kind of start a podcast. I mean, that's a perfect example too. It was something that like I'd wanted to do for a really long time. And I just love having these like real conversations. And I kind of was like, you know, who's to say that like your neighbor doesn't have the best piece of advice, but doesn't ever have a platform for it. They never get to talk on it. And so the whole concept is like, we pick a topic and she and I talk about it for the, the first part the second one we choose someone and the third one is always like self-nominated or somebody else nominates them and it can be literally anybody um and so yeah that's kind of the concept but we wait, wait, wait so you guys to get on and then you just pick a rando to be on the show with you well, kind kind of so we'll, we'll pick a topic like let's say whatever it's uh, overcoming obstacles was one of our recent ones and so we wait, it's wait, like, what was the last one um overcoming obstacles oh cool was kind okay. of the theme and so she and i for part one we kind of have a conversation about it and that's an episode and then part two um, we will bring on somebody that we want to bring on to talk about their obstacle that seems like a good fit. And then the third one will be somebody that, um, you know, a D DMs us or, or let's say somebody knew about you and was like, she would be perfect. Like, and then we reached out to you. I mean, it can be anybody, it can be your grandma, like, like whoever has like a, a story, um, or advice or just wants to, to share. And so, that's kind of what, what it's all about. And it's very loosey goosey. We don't edit literally any of it, um, which I wanted. And for me, like personally, that made it a lot more enjoyable to not have it be, I don't know, there's just so much going on in my career. Otherwise, like I was like, this should just be something fun. And like, 
I yeah. literally don't care if it's like one person listening or um, 1,000 people listening. So I just wanted to have my own podcast. And so I'd been on hers and we kind of uh, just hit it off. And I was just like, would you ever want to do this with me? Um, and, you know, I kind of realized it would probably be easier on me at the moment if I had somebody who was yes. who was in it with me. Um, yeah. And, you know, not again, not to make you like a codependent situation, but it definitely whatever yeah. it would be fun and i loved that we could have these conversations and it was on different coasts and whatever and uh and so yeah and so we we kind of just had, had started it <laughs> that's so cool and tell me remind me again what the name of it is it's called unwritten unwritten i love yeah. that that's so cool i'm gonna have to find that as soon as i get off i'm gonna be looking for that for yeah, sure no please do love that's so cool well <laughs> i love this i love everything about this conversation and mm -hmm. i just appreciate your time i know how daggum busy you are and like all the things that are on your plate every day and just um just really really appreciate you taking time to hang out with us today mm -hmm. cool. and I definitely encourage you guys go check her out, go find her website, go to her music, look at see what she's doing. She's such an inspiration. And I just, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm glad we finally got to find a time that we could connect and mm -hmm. I look forward to, you know, where this goes or whatever. And, um, appreciate you. I hope you have a great, yeah. whatever you're doing and, oh, tell me too, what, what do you got coming up? Like what's, oh, yeah. what's in store? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, man, last year I released like nine singles in an EP. And so, um, I've got two more left, uh, two more singles left before the part two of the EP, uh, comes out. Um, and it's called the awakening volume two. The awakening Wait, what is it? Awakenings? Yeah. The awakening volume two, uh, will be the second EP and the awakening volume one, um, is already out. And so, yeah, I've got two more singles and then that EP, which will be really exciting. Um, so that'll be coming out this spring. And then some collabs and features that are coming out, which will be really fun, too, and something I've wanted to do for a while now uh, with other artists and, and producers. Um, and what else? I mean, shows, merchandise, um, definitely the year of merchandise I've been wanting to do that for a minute um it's been a long time since i've had merchandise uh so i'm i'm really excited to launch that uh, what else? Oh, cool yeah lots of different lots of different irons and fire <laughs> constantly creating you're just like a creator on yeah. on, like, on speed here i love mm -hmm. it and that's yeah. so inspirational like i mm -hmm. i hope you guys are watching and listening and feeling this mm -hmm. and just doing whatever you're supposed to do in your neck of the woods and yeah. you know like just feeling it um and um definitely find her on all the social media platforms and be watching for what she's doing and you'll have to come back sometime maybe we'll have you on a panel or yeah. something else fun Please. yes i would love that any opportunities there this is this is what it's all about for me so thank you for helping me awesome. continue to uh i guess align with that mission <laughs> awesome all right, guys. Well, and you guys can find me at drshornell.com. Um, all the stuff there. There's several, several, um, several playlists too on um, YouTube where you get, there's lots of teaching stuff about all the geeky science, spiritual stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, lots of fun things if you guys want to check that out. And we are here every Thursday at 7 p.m. So you can always find us here. And Thank you guys for watching. We love you guys and we look forward to seeing you next time. Talk soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.